uh, Dali and Me Journey is, uh, is generate are generating uh, stuff that uh, like images that you really can't see and you really can't search, and it's just able to generate them in a few seconds. Uh, so that's uh, really cool. But still, there are some challenges, and I think that one of the main challenges is evaluation because users want to generate images that do not exist. And I think that it's non-trivial to evaluate the quality of generated images without reference images, or to evaluate the quality of generate of the quality of the model without even having ground truth captions. So I'm not sure if you know it, but if you look at the Imagine paper and Dali paper, they are evaluating their model on uh, on MS Coco, which is basically images images that they found on uh, Flickr, I think, and it's just like uh, pictures of people, like uh, I don't know, like uh, a chef, uh, a chef at a restaurant, or uh, a kitchen with uh, with uh, with an oven, stuff that I think that people want really want to generate because they can be found so easily. So first of all, I don't think that we have a true picture of which models are the best uh, for, for like which, which, uh, which models will users prefer. Um, and currently the metrics that they are measuring the models with are FID and clip score. Uh, but um, as I said, there are images that exist and not on images that users want to generate. So the first challenge that I think that we are that we currently have is evaluation, which is very important to improve models. Um, and the second uh, the second challenge obviously is training those models. So currently, we train models on images that, that do exist with their corresponding captions, and. Um, and we kind of uh, rely on their generalization abilities to generalize to really, really cool prompts that no one has ever uh, seen before. Um, however, we, we know that human feedback can help in improving these models. So I think that a good, uh, a good uh, analogy will be to look at uh, ChatGPT, for example, or I don't know. I, I don't know what ChatGPT did exactly, but on those RLHF models. So first of all, you took a, a randomly initialized neural network. You pre-trained it on a lot of uh, self in a self-supervised fashion on a lot of unlabeled data. And then it's like the T5 and the GPT-2 that we all knew. Um, and they were cool, but it seems like fine tuning on data that users actually care about um, can lead and to use this human feedback can lead into models that are much more useful and much better at um, in the domain that users care about. And I think, I don't know, but I think the chat GPT also uses a lot of uh, labeled data and uh, uh, RLH and, and uses human feedback at least uh, to become better at uh, at uh, chatting with people and helping people out. So just to summarize those two points, those two challenges, the first problem is evaluation. Um, it is hard to evaluate the quality of models uh, without having a proper data set on, on data that users care about, which is pictures, images that do not exist. And the second one is training that human feedback can probably help our models become better at. So to make some advancement in, the, in those challenges, we, we created Peek a Peek, which is a platform, um, a web app more specifically, that allows users to generate images uh, that they want to see. And we tell them up front, uh, look, we're going to collect this data. Um, 
So like you can generate images for free and we'll collect this data. The data will be uh, publicly available, available for everyone. And we won't only collect the data, we will also collect the interactions of the users. So uh, this project is completely open and it's free. Those two things are mainly like because I like open source code and because I think that it will incent it will provide an incentive for more people to use it. And this is how the web app looks like. And the workflow works as follows. So first the user writes a caption. For example, you can see here a hybrid between a dog and a monkey. And then they can click on the generate button. And then we will generate four images for them. And then in order to download the image or generate new images, they need to choose their favorite image. Or they can also say that they didn't like any, any image. So that's the platform. And we hope that the next stage, after we collect enough data, is to work on specifically um, use this data to create better evaluation sets. And also, we can use the interactions to create better metrics. Currently, the standard metric in, in, um, in text-to-image generation is FID. Um, do you know what FID is? Uh, it might be worth having a refresher for people who aren't uh, people who are yeah. doing this from NLP and don't have much experience with uh, images. Okay, cool. And everything is clear so far. I'm just uh, I don't know. Like, am I going too fast? Uh, is it cool? Are you all okay? Are there any questions? So... Yeah. Anyone else? Feel free to unmute your unmute your mic and uh, say some things if you want. Yeah. Yeah. This should be like a very much of a discussion. Like there, there's not a lot, not a lot more slides. So. Yeah, okay, cool. So FID is a metric that takes um, a large set of uh, reference images. And additionally, hmm. why did you decide on peak best out of four? Um, so there was a question, uh, why did you decide to pick the best out of four? Uh, would you not get higher quality data by collecting either pair, pairwise references uh, from two or by collecting a full ranking of the four? Um, so this is a very good question. Um, this is a very good question. What do you mean exactly by full ranking? And you can unleash your, uh, uh, your mic and just like uh, ask it out yeah. loud. Sure, I just meant um, you know, uh, often in some of the papers with RLHF or NLP, um, the data collection is actually like a full ranking of um, more than two generations. So like, the users are asked to rank you know, by preference according to some axis, uh, you, know, you know, preference one, two, three, four, for example. Uh, that's much of what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. So there is a tension, I think between getting the most out of uh, out of the data that we get annotated and to get as many data points annotated as possible so this is the tension because if we go for the full ranking of the four so i think that a lot of users might say okay like this is too too many clicks for me like i can handle two clicks I can handle a single click to rank to rank like uh, for each image, but I don't want to start like writing. And uh, so we thought that that it will be less fun for users to to provide full ranking. And uh, this might be different from um, stuff that Anthropic and OpenAI do, in the, in because they can simply pay for the they simply they can simply pay for it. And they have, I think, their their turkers, uh, like the people that they use for crowdsourcing, are very uh, of high quality. 
Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, even in that case, there is also attention, right? So like, they don't force users to rank, you know, ten options because that's like too much for people to uh, comprehend, really. Um, but even if you just wanted one click, you could have like pairwise preferences rather than four. Like maybe it's different for images in the sense that you maybe want. It's like yeah. harder for people to choose between two images. But if you did just have two, then you can collect full yeah. preferences, right? Because it's just power. Yeah. So this is true. Um, first of all, like I'm not sure that what like that what we have done is like uh, the best thing that we could have done. But I thought that if people will get four images, so first of all, it doesn't it it doesn't affect the inference time. Because all of the all of the images are generated at the same time on different devices, um, yeah. and I thought that if there are four images, rather there are two than two, so the odds are that one image will stand out, will be larger, uh, and I thought that having six or eight will be again like uh, will make it look like not as good, and also we didn't know how much workload we'll have, so four was like was just like a decision. Okay, we'll go for it. And again, if we have, I, I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that if we have four images, so so it's like doing like the full ranking with uh, that you suggested with two images, right? Because I can turn those four images into three pairs. So like we get this data. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That makes sense. I, I get it. it's like a kind of um, getting a balance between making sure you have a good quantity and quality of data. Um, I was also sorry just to interrupt, I was going to ask another question, which is, have you thought at all about um, ensuring a good diversity of the data? So obviously, to train a model from this kind of data, you want like a good spread of like of prompts, uh, basically, in this case, to you know, ensure that we're sort of trying to cover you know, a large space of possible images generated, uh, and so on. So that's something to think about. Um, can you please repeat the question? I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't hear you so so well. Yeah, I'm just trying to ask if you thought a little about diversity or like some way of yeah. about diversity of generated data. Yeah. So diversity is really like um, it's an issue in this case. We didn't know when we launched it. We didn't know how 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 many people it will reach. So if we would reach uh, I don't know like uh, millions of people, so diversity won't be an issue. I think, but it may be the case that in this project we are not we are not able either to make like a good enough app or to publicize this app as much as we need to reach enough people, and we may see um, artifacts in the data that uh, the data reached only a certain group of people that uh, that is unrepresentative of the general distribution of images that people really want to see. So I think that all we can do is just like try to reach as many people as we can. And afterwards, when we'll try to, to use this data, we will be able to filter it, for example, like in, in the best case scenario, we'll be able to filter it to get a single prompt from each user. And this will uh, increase the chances of us getting a very diverse data. If, we, if, if this answers your question, I'm not sure. Perhaps you were. Uh, yeah, yeah, that answers the question. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We do, we do, we do have an issue that we do have an issue that is pretty like it's about the images that I think that it's hard to get away from. That I think that a lot of the times the model generates images that are pretty similar and pretty of like similar quality. Uh, I saw it a few days ago when I changed the guidance scale of the model, but um, I don't, I'm not sure if you know what the guidance scale is. Uh, so perhaps I'll, I'll say so. One, we, we use diffusion models and a diffusion model when, uh, when it generates an image. So, um, it gets some kind of hyperparameter uh, that affects this image generation process. I won't get into too much uh, specifics, but I'll, I'll say that it's a hyperparameter, and it can affect the how much the 
how much importance the model gives to the caption rather than just generating uh, an image unconditionally. And up until now, we used a very small range of guidance scales uh, because I thought that it will lead to more, more quality uh, generations. And I hope that this will lead to more user interactions. Um, and there was a small ish problem, I think, that I used the same guidance scale for all of the images that are generated in a batch. And so, again, a few days ago, I changed it. And now we are using a much wider guidance scale and range that we sample for each image. And, um, and for each image, we are using a different guidance scale. I hope that it was clear. Um, I hope that it was clear. If not, I can uh, I can repeat what I've said. I mean, one thing you um, well, one thing you could do is uh, let the user like select an option that says, "Oh, all the images look mostly the same," or like the difference in the images isn't that big, so that you can maybe in if like have that in the data set. So if someone's training a model, it might be valuable for them to uh, train focus training more so on examples where the difference is clear between like this image is a lot lot better than this one. Yeah. 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 This is a good idea. This I also think um, there, there's a couple of things I want to bring up. We have some questions from the chat, which I'll go through in a second. But uh, mm -hmm. regarding the thing from before about like pick best out of four versus uh, pairwise com uh, comparisons, one thing that's true with image models, I learned at this point, uh, that's not that might not be as true with uh, uh, LMs, is that uh, you can get into situations where to see the thing you actually want, you have to basically generate many, many examples, and then eventually you get what you want. In in my experience, playing around stable diffusion, for funny prompts like for memes and things, uh, the success rate was maybe one in one in ten. So it's yeah. like I generate ten images, and a lot of them are garbage, and then one of them just happens to be exactly what I was looking for, and it's really good. Like I this think, is, uh, yeah, yeah. The one, the one example very... I've been giving everyone, yeah, is this like, yeah. um, sorry. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that like I agree with you. This is a very good insight. And I think that we had a similar insight. So what we did is I'll go back one slide. So once you pick an image and then you select to generate again, so the selected image remains. So I was hoping that a user will generate enough times until they get this good image. So you said that like one out of 10. So if they generate like three times and they always keep the best image. So I hope that like one of those interactions will get the best image and uh, we'll have a lot of different images to compare it with. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, so this is really like, this is a really good point and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of users uh, thought that it's a bug, so they told me like uh, <laughs> the image that I pick, it's like it remains uh, <laughs> no matter what I do. But uh, but it's actually a feature uh, that perhaps uh, we should have explained about it more clearly more clearly in the web app. Just like just for you, like uh, I didn't do I, I I didn't know like what HTML is before uh, I created this web app, so it probably can be like improved by so much. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. I, yeah. We made like an evaluation uh, platform called Cheese, and I had no like <laughs> experience working with stuff like that before, and it is it is a lot of new stuff, yeah. lots of new programming. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. the for the questions from the chat, um, let's just go through these. Uh, someone said basically quantity is greater than quality in this context. I'm just gonna say like I agree with that because like obviously you it might take a bit more images to get what you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other question was, what is traction for users on Pikapik? How do we incentivize people to use Pikapik? Seems like we need a decent amount of data and diversity for the text prompts. So. Let, let me, uh, I didn't get all that. That was a long question. Um, it's from Felix Zhang. OK, what is the traction for users on Pika Peak? So what you're asking is like, what is the stat by, by traction? Do you mean what is the status? Uh, like, how many uh, interactions did we get so far? Uh, if so, if this is the question, so we got about 20,000 uh, rankings so far, which is 
I think it's really not enough. Um, I think that we can get a lot more. Um, we can get a lot more. And the incentive basically is that it's free and that it's like for a good cause. If you can say so, free is like uh, if you compare it to other alternatives, most of them are are not free. And I also th think that it's pretty fast. Like it depends with what you compare it with, but it takes like roughly uh, like ten seconds to get an image, uh, like to get to get those four images. And when I'm playing around with Mid Journey. I think that it takes like 10 seconds to get a single image. Uh, so it depends what you can. I, I know that because we are running on TPUs, I couldn't uh, use TensorRT and to get the generation uh, speed uh, much lower. But uh, but I think that it's a decent uh, speed when comparing to alternatives. So this is one incentive. The second one is obviously that it's free. And the, th the third one is when you are uh, interacting with uh, when you are giving your data away to uh, to companies, uh, so they are using it to make their product better, which is like very legit. There is nothing like it's all cool. Uh, but here, everything will be publicly available, so you also get a chance to contribute to uh, advancement of uh, of improving text to image models. Which I don't know how many users care for, but uh, care for it, but. I'm sure that at least some uh, told themselves, OK, I'll do a couple of prompts. Uh, <laughs> I'll contribute to this uh, effort. Uh, it seems nice. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, and about the data, this is really a challenge. I think that compute-wise, we have enough compute. We have 10, uh, we have 10 uh, TPUs uh, that are constantly running. And four images take like um uh, oh sorry. So we but we have a devices, so we have like 80, 80, uh, 80 cards of TPUs running every second. So we could get a lot of images uh, like each ten se each ten seconds we can get uh, like we can do the math. So we we can like we the problem is that we don't get enough user interactions. And this is a challenge that I'm not sure how we can solve. Perhaps uh, you will be able to help us with it. Perhaps think of like provide feedback of how we can improve that. Perhaps uh, suggest alternatives, perhaps in terms of compute. Because if we had GPUs rather than TPUs, we could get the latency to be much lower. And uh, perhaps in uh, PR English. Uh, yeah, I'm just like a PhD student, so uh, my knowledge about how to get a lot of users and uh, is uh, unfortunately uh, pretty limited. And uh, twenty thousand is nice, but I don't think that it's enough. Out of curiosity, what do you think is a good number for something like this? Well, <laughs> I'm a. I would be very happy with one million interactions. But that's like a daydreaming. I think that 100,000 could be a, a nice number. And I also mm -hmm. think that it's very, very depends on what we will see in the data. So a few days ago, I looked and I tried to annotate myself to compare my annotation with, with user annotations. And I saw that the agreement is, is pretty low. So it was like 60%, 65% uh, agreement. This means that a lot of the data. So if if the agreement was like one hundred percent, then we'd need then we'd probably need less data. But since the agreement seem seem to be pretty low, I think that we'll need more data because there is a lot of noise in the data. Probably so. I thought that this image was the best, but if you, perhaps someone else would think that this image is better. Um. So is there any way to uh to modify the generation such that you're basically promoting the model to kind of uh uh have greater diversity in the sense that you're increasing the risk that some of the images don't match the prompt because in general uh, even if it's like uh you're kind of degrading the quality of the generations 
making a like some pairs where it's like very obvious that one's going to be preferred over another might be very uh, useful. Yeah. So rather than just doing like a like a simple generation, maybe there's a way that you can perturb it somehow that uh, causes some of the generations to be slightly worse for whatever reason. Yeah. Just so to you're, make uh, better you, comparisons. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I get your point. This is a good idea. I try to do it somewhat with uh, with setting a unique guidance scale for each uh, image. Yeah. But perhaps we need to do something that is uh, more uh, more aggressive perhaps we can just like said okay this like the first image is going to have like a really low guidance scale the second image is going to have like a mediocre guidance scale the third one is going to have like a high guidance scale and the fourth one is going to have like a really high guidance scale and like one of them will be like the correct guidance scale for this specific prompt and the rest will probably be not as good as uh, as uh, we could have made them. I was honestly thinking even in terms of like uh, doing things with a prompt, because I mean, we have a good sense. I feel like after like, like in, in like as a community thing, I feel like people have a good sense of like the kinds of failures and the kinds of mistakes that uh, stable diffusion at least makes and a lot of these image generators make. And I feel like incorporating maybe some knowledge on those failure, failure cases could help us. Can you please provide an example just for me to make sure that I get my head around what you're suggesting? So. I can think of an example for um, for for t uh, text. I don't, uh, and I can think of only one example for images. I think for text, the uh, a very simple case would be like uh, you know before they made any instruct models, you have this situation where if you ask the model a question, it tried to just predict more questions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right. So I think uh, there's certain kinds of prompts which are very uh, unlikely to cause issues. I'd say, for example, a hybrid between a dog and a monkey is a relatively simple prompt in some cases. There's not that much room for, for the model to mess up. Um, now, one thing I, I wonder is like, you know, you have a lot of issues with diffusion models with compositionality, uh, mm -hmm. with negations, and with um, uh, juxtapositioning to images. So for example, the one thing, I, the one prompt I've always used as like a fun kind of uh, like test of this is like, let's say you do like, I don't know, uh, of like a celebrity in a, in a game or something, right? Like let's say you did like Ryan Gosling in God of War. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there's two different things that uh, that the model might do. Uh, it'll either you know do what you want, make a drawing of Ryan Gosling in the game, or it'll do a juxtaposition where it's, it gives you basically two images side by side, where one side is a picture of his face and one side's a picture of the game, right? Yeah. So I'm wondering if you can kind of nudge the model towards making these kinds of mistakes specifically so you can have them in your training data set as like bad examples, like don't do this, you know? Mm. Um. I'm not sure how we can do it without knowing the prompt in advance. Do you perhaps, uh, oh, are you suggesting? Maybe. Maybe modifying yeah. the prompt in some way with, I mean, if you use a zero shot with a language model, you can do a surprising amount with prompts. Like I, I, I don't know if, if you've played around with this, but I've been amazed by it. Well, one example was I tested if you can, uh, like I tested this uh, with uh, the OpenAI Playground. And it's just like, if you, if you have a prompt, like let's say, I don't know, a, a cat on a table uh, behind a vase or something, you can, you can basically, uh, prompt it to like do things with prompts for you. So like one thing I was able to do with that prompt, for example, was I had to change it to a different prompt where like, let's say uh, there's a different order or something, or I changed it to like, it decomposes the prompt into a bunch of sub prompts or things like that. So yeah. you can you can do things with prompts with uh, zero shot language models. And I don't know, there might be some use, use case there or something, if you think if it's, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that it's an, a very interesting idea. Um, so basically, let me try to paraphrase what you're suggesting is to somehow modify the prompt itself to create more diversity. Um, and specifically, you, I think that you're saying that it would be nice to, yeah, and you, you think that uh, paraphrasing the prompt in different ways could lead to more diversity and uh, exactly yeah probably more diversity will lead to one image being better than at least one other image or uh, yeah you're kind of just trying to increase like the distance and quality between the images if that makes sense because then you get better examples yeah 
Yeah, so this is something that it's like a little bit uh, takes more compute to do the, oh, okay. than using a different yeah. guidance scale. No, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm, not just, I'm just like saying it takes a little bit more compute than changing the guidance scale, mm -hmm. but it can definitely have like a better impact than changing the guidance scale or a larger impact, or I don't know, like a, a different kind of impact to changing the guidance scale that perhaps can be uh, also very good to use. So well, I believe um, for the OpenAI API, I'm, I'm thinking back to Tim Brooks' paper, Instruct Fixed FX. Uh, I think that uh, you are you don't really have to have your own language model in this case. You could just use uh, like their API to, to do this because it's an open source project and it's for research. So I think I think they allow that in those situations. The OpenAI. Yeah, their API, uh, like Instruct Picks to Picks, did something uh, very similar where they they basically yeah. re rephrase prompts using the uh, using yeah. GPT, uh, like DaVinci three or something. Yeah, everything that requires like budget from us, so it takes right. a lot of time. It takes a lot of time because like we are working, like, so we're I mean, getting we our budget. That. So this will be fantastic if you can help us with that because. I uh, uh, I also wanted to just like throw in Dali two into the model mix, and the university is like, okay, mm -hmm. uh, you want a budget for this? Okay, Omar, Omar has this budget, but it will take us like one month <laughs> until we can get things sorted out so you can use this budget. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but we don't have one month, <laughs> so so uh, we can we can definitely look into support, like providing um, maybe even providing compute, providing volunteers, providing uh credits things like that yeah so yeah. so this will be amazing like we can use everything uh, from uh, like actual budget like for like uh, an open ai account so we can use uh, dali2 or uh, or gpt as you suggested uh to draw more users and to get more diverse uh, images and obviously we can use like uh, Everything, like everything that you can help us with, because uh, currently it's like uh, uh, it's only me. So uh, it's it's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, other questions from the chat. Um, how do you? So one person is basically just asking, how do you deal with the uh, uh, users who are basically being harmful? Like they're they're trying to like let's say ruin the quality of the selections by uh, purposefully choosing things that uh, you know don't don't fit like maybe choosing the worst example or something so honestly like i just hoped that we won't encounter these kind of users so these if someone will decide that they want to harm the project uh, they will be able to do it but we will be able to later uh take say okay so Ah, okay, so what we're doing is as follows. First of all, we got a lot of like uh, criti criticism about it. We are asking for people to read, to authenticate through Google to prove that there are real, real humans. So uh, this will allow us to see if a certain user is harmful, and then we'll be able to either block them or to uh, or to afterwards just say okay we don't want to include this specific user in our data set uh, so this is an option that we have uh, this is one measurement that we can take against harmful users and like i was forced to uh, to block a user or two that did like really not safe for work uh, prompts um, uh, but I didn't like. But I didn't check if uh, if someone like is trying just to deliberately make wrong judgments. Um, but what we will do is afterwards we will limit the amount of interactions that we take from each user. So I don't. So like, if a certain or a few users will decide to. Um, will decide to uh, make uh, bad judgments on purpose. So afterwards, uh, the overall weight will be very little in the when you're comparing it to the entire data set. And there will just be noise in the data set, which I guess that you, you always get noise in the data set that you're training with. And 
this is under the assumption that most users will play nicely. Yeah, I think the the concern I'd probably have is just like um, recently there's this whole uh, there's this whole uh, anti AI art movement, and I've seen at least uh, like looking at online communities, the 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 people arguing uh, or the people you know against AI art can get very very hostile very very fast sometimes. So I I wouldn't like put it past like you know people from that group to to try to sabotage things like this. Yeah, so, so... I, feel, yeah I feel like it is a, a real concern. Yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, I'm sure that it's a concern. I really hope that we'll be able to get to enough people because I, I'm sure that this community is not like very, very large. So I think that if we'll be able to get to enough people, we'll be able to uh, bypass it. So I think let's stability say, can probably help with uh, with PR and getting it out to more people. Yeah, so. This will be like really, really awesome. I tried like to uh, to reach out on their channel on the Discord channel, and the I didn't get a respond. Uh, perhaps it got like uh, perhaps perhaps it got filtered out automatically by the Discord bot, or perhaps they just didn't notice it. But if you mean on the like said, stable diffusion server, I think yeah, it's just probably really, really busy there. No, they could just yeah. Decide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they probably just missed it, but uh, I guess that like you are my uh, <laughs> my best uh, point of contact for this uh, for this point. So if you'll be able to uh, to to help us with PR, like uh, I don't know, uh, with stability AI, uh, it would be really amazing. I also think like I'm not sure, but um, if they were able to uh, like provide an API point for us or uh, to do a, a better uh, collaboration until we get a, a specific amount of data, so we could it can it could also help us to reduce the inference time and oh, perhaps yeah, of they yeah, have, that too we can we can definitely help with yeah yeah and perhaps they have better models that uh, perhaps they have better models that we can use that will also incentivize uh, people to use this web up and so so yeah I, i'm sure that like there are a lot of stuff that uh, you can help us with and that might be like even crucial for this uh, project to succeed and like what i'm doing is i'm just like doing my best and if it work out cool if not so it's another product another project that uh, i try you know it's like uh, that's the life of a phd right Uh, are there right. were there any other questions there from the from the chat? Oh yeah, there is a there is a ton now. Uh, uh -huh. I'll keep moving through them. Um, yeah, there was a lot of questions about diversity, which I think we went through, and also for adversarial attacks. Um, oh yeah, I think Herbie asked about generating diverse prompts with an LM, but we also kind of uh, did talk about that. Mm -hmm. And I think you can you can probably extend that more and use that you can uh, like, yeah, ask users to uh, rate their results. I think I think it is a, a promising idea. I know uh, Toloka as well uh, is, is working on that because they have a, a, a data set called Best Prompts, where they're working on changing uh, prompts uh, rather than the images to make a data set out of that. There's a lot of interesting work going there, yeah. Uh, so if you can please like uh, send like send me in the mail uh, like a uh, reference to one of those stuff, so uh, I'll, I'll definitely look into it. It's very super of interesting. Of course, yeah. Thank you. Uh, people, someone saying that uh, for certain things there might be experts, uh, like like you say tourist uh, tourists versus someone who lives somewhere or someone who does HVAC versus someone who just uses an AC. So people with more knowledge might give a higher quality data on certain situations. Yeah, so this is actually a very good point, uh, which I think it's like interesting to share, uh, like the the the, uh, the process that we went through when creating this app. So we were we like, so we had this tension between like uh, getting higher quality data and uh, getting more data. And the other tension that we had was like, do we want to appeal 
to like experts in uh, image generation or do, do we want like uh, to appeal to like to appeal as much to the average person um, that like for example doesn't know what a negative prompt is and like that might be like even the first time that they are able to generate images from text so um, so initially we try to keep it as simple as possible so that the only thing that is that we are enabling the users to do is to write the prompt and now we've additionally uh, allowed them to uh, to to write their own negative prompt and perhaps if we will uh, allow more features such as uh, controlling the guidance scale uh, perhaps uh, and perhaps using the scheduler or whatnot perhaps this will allow us to get even a uh, higher quality data so we are trying to make like modifications that will allow experts to get the most out of this demo without uh, making this demo less appealing to people that are unfamiliar with image generation which i think that they are also like extremely important because uh, uh, you know a model that is able to to work well only for prompts that are super complicated and like super featurey. Uh, so I think that we shouldn't like thrive to these kind of models. I think that we should uh, try to get models that are able to get very good generations from pretty simple prompts. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh... Are you planning on incorporating uh, other variables like the duration of a user session or like the length or complexity of their prompt or things like that? So I think that first of all, what we need to concentrate on is just getting a sufficient amount of data. And I think that once we'll get a sufficient amount of data, then we'll then we'll be able to to like do some very fine grained considerations like uh, like uh, taking the like considering which prompts are longer or shorter, considering how many interactions did the user have, and uh, these kind of stuff, which are fascinating, which are truly fascinating and can be of really value. But I think that the thing that like first of all, we we should get like a good amount of uh, annotations and interactions uh, before we go there. Uh, or at least it shouldn't like uh, prevent us from getting there because if we currently have 20,000 rankings and say that like, uh, I don't know, like half of them or perhaps a bit more um, is of high quality, um, we don't really have the data to spare, do we? Uh, okay, so then... It's, I think someone asked you to define ease and interaction. Uh, I wonder yeah. if this was from when we were talking about uh, like the difficulty of uh, having four images or yeah. Uh, so I'm, like I'm so yeah. I'm I'm sorry if I didn't define it. Like for me, a user interaction is uh, the ranking itself. So that that's like what I call the user. Like that's the most important user interaction for me uh, because if there are like an important interaction is writing the prompt in the first place, uh, but uh, but I'm taking this currently for a given, and when I'm talking about interaction, so I mostly mean uh, ranking. Yeah, so it's like uh, I don't know. Perhaps it's like uh, uh, w when I'm saying interactions, I mean generally. I'm speaking generally about like getting a lot of prompts and rankings and images and uh, those kind of stuff. So that's what I mean. Okay, um, so, so Herbie, you said 100K seems good. Uh, the issue is that for, for images, because it's uh, there's a higher dimensionality to it, the, what's good for language models might not be the same for what's good for, for image generation models in terms of like amount of data. 
I think some people I've talked about this have said that they thought like you would probably need more images for image or you need more data points for image generation than you would for language generation. Yeah, so I think that the amount of data points that you need is very highly dependent on the domain. So it depends on a lot of factors. You said the domain, which you are absolutely right. I also think that it depends on the models, uh, like on the images themselves. So if they are very different from one another, uh, so th this like that's good. If the decision, if, if the agreement on rankings is also high, so this will be even better. And if they all belong, like yeah. So I think that there are a lot of different considerations and. Uh, I hope that we'll get enough uh, uh, enough data to uh, to find out uh, how do how, how do this stuff uh, differ from uh, language. Okay. Um... Oh, that might actually be a question for you, Herbie. Uh, if uh, yeah, if that's all for I can go on like uh, to like to, to the last slide, and then we can uh, continue with uh, the other questions. Mm -hmm. yeah, go yeah, for it. Sure. Okay, so so uh, yeah, so we said that after we get this data, we can um, we can use this data to create better evaluation sets. So as I said, currently uh, models are basically. What I think they're measuring their ability to generate uh, realistic images because the main uh, data set, the main benchmark that is used to evaluate image generation models is MS Coco, which is only real images. And I think that the metric that is used to measure those image generation models, FID, is a really bad metric. Um, so, and I have like a strong proof of it. So, um, if you're familiar with guidance scale, so once you're once you're setting the guidance scale to a low value, um, the text image correspondence will be uh, very bad, and the image will not look like. And if you're setting it too low, images will look very bad, and currently. The guidance scale that are getting the best FID are guidance scale that people never use when they are generating images. So, I think that the current benchmarks that are used to evaluate uh, text-to-image models and the current metrics that are used to evaluate uh, text-to-image models are pretty bad. And I think that potentially, in this project, we can make some cool advancements in these uh, areas. And. The third one is you should you you probably know a lot better than me about it is how we can use this data to improve existing models and uh, uh, there are a lot of different uh, ways. I guess that the simplest uh, like the first thing to try, tell me if I'm uh, wrong, but is just to fine tune on the selected images that were selected as better, which is like distilling to uh, the model to like a better version of itself. To like the best version of itself, and uh, afterwards we can do some more, uh, more uh, um, complicated stuff like uh, RLHF, uh, for example, and, and uh, stuff like this. And yeah, so the status is so far we have about twenty thousand rankings and over one thousand users. And I really hope that we'll be able, uh, perhaps with your help, to get to uh, many more users and to get a lot more rankings. And um, yeah, so we talked all about it, like we already talked about it, but the challenges are we need like to get more data. And oh, sorry. We need to get more data. And we need the data to be of. Uh, high quality so we want our data points to be learnable and um, if uh, decisions are just arbitrary and there is not 
human agreement between rankings. So a model will probably face the same issue and we won't be able to learn a reward model and we won't be able to improve models with it. Like this is my assumption. And yeah, and afterwards we'll be able to worry about how to better use this data to, uh, to do some cool stuff, which is really like uh, um, the goal of this project. And yeah, so uh, these actually are images that were generated by users in uh, Pika Peak. So uh, I hope that you will, will, you will all play with it and uh, enjoy it. And we've recently added a few, uh, we've recently added another open source model, uh, which is called Photoreal uh, something uh, V2, uh, which is better than, uh, than the previous model that we used. So currently we're using Stable Diffusion 2.1 and this uh, uh, Dreamlike Photoreal V2 model. And, uh, and uh, that's it. Uh, thank you all so much. And uh, now I think that we can get like the, the rest of the questions and, uh, and feedback and, uh, and thank you all so much again for very insightful uh, comments and uh, questions. All right, so um, I accidentally closed uh, the meeting window and reopened it. So the messages are all gone for me. Uh, is there mm -hmm. anyone else here that can maybe read them or like, could you just read them yourself? Cause I can't see them anymore. Yeah, so I'll go over them. Mm -mm -mm. So the second mode for annotation, final idea might be to have a second mode for annotation where you synthetically generate the reverse prompts with an LM. Yeah, so we talked about it. Uh, yeah, perhaps if someone can help me with like uh, getting the questions, it will be. Uh, to make things easier for me. Um, Let me just, uh... oh, Lewis, you're still in here, right? Yeah, but I can't really talk because my partner okay, is then. sleeping. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Herbie, is Herbie still here? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh, do you uh, think you could help with the questions then? Yeah, sure. What was the last question you looked at? I'm trying to remember. I think it was uh, something on user interaction. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, it mostly just comments past that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, Alistair asks, you know, how can we measure data set diversity? What would be a minimal acceptable diversity threshold? Hmm. Mm. So, what do you mean exactly by data set diversity? Um, what, what yeah, do you I mean, exactly like diversity in the prompts or of the images. Um, uh, I mean, I guess for images, there are a bunch of things you can do, like embeddings. And then, like, there are some mm. people. There's some people who listen to that, basically. Uh, um. So. Okay. So this is a good question. I think that. I think that measuring the data for diversity we could probably uh, do what you suggested, like to try to uh, cluster the prompts or to cluster the images. The probably clip will do a fine job with it and then we'll be able to, uh, to see like uh, what are the prompts that people like or what are the images that people uh, are interested in. And and about ensuring that we have like enough diversity to represent uh, something that is meaningful and not like perhaps like a very small group of people that saw this app on Reddit and they don't feel like paying for a mid journey. Uh, so for this, we'll probably need like for the app to be uh, to be fun to play with and that people will feel like they're gaining uh, real utility from it and to be able to promote it uh, so a lot of people will use it. So I think that, um, so that's that. And, uh, 
And another thing that we'll do, so we'll, as I said, we'll limit the, the, the number of interactions that we are using uh, for each user. So we don't get like, uh, I don't know, uh, if a certain user only likes to uh, draw uh, poodles, like uh, I like to draw poodles, to uh, generate poodles. So uh, we don't, we won't get like uh, a huge amount of poodles because we'll, uh, uh, we limit the number of interactions that each user can contribute to the overall data set. And uh, we'll just hope that we get to enough people so it will be uh, meaningful. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, are there any further questions so far? Yeah, cool. So uh, I'd love uh, for uh, you to uh, perhaps tell me uh, about Carper AI and like what are the projects that you are currently working on what are the projects that you are uh, most uh, fascinated about and eager to deliver and uh, uh, what is your uh, work mode you like work on a really big project and just like uh, i'd love to know more about carper ai and What uh, let's discuss this offline. Sorry, because the we we had an hour allocated for the talk. Mm. Okay. Okay. Cool. So yeah. uh, thank you so guys. Thank you all so much. for coming. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Bye bye. Bye.